Please join me in welcoming our amazing speaker to the stage today, Christine Outro. amazingly accomplished and so cool and like a great community to be in, in LA um, but I'm also excited uh, because when I was asked to come here and speak about community it's something that's really close to my heart and it's been something that is a thread throughout my career it's also something that I've been thinking about a lot in the last couple of months um, I have a startup with my lovely co-founder here Lena Lena put your hand up so I'm wondering who you are and we've been thinking a lot about how community is a main uh, pillar of what we're doing in our startup. Um, you know, how can we make profit, but also how can we help people at the same time? And so it was kind of you know, serendipitous that Lindsay asked me to speak because it really allowed me to concretize some of my thoughts around how we might build community together. But I was also asked to give a little bit of background on who I am and you know, what I've done. Uh, so kind of why don't we jump into that? Who is an architect here? Anybody? Oh look, a few of you. I'm a recovering architect. Um, so I started out my career in Sydney and you know, spent a couple of years there building buildings. But one of the things that I quickly realized with architecture is that it takes a long time to build anything. And once you've built stuff, you can't change anything. Which for me was a little frustrating. I was like, okay, how do I, how do I kind of use my creative talents, but then also how do I keep on responding to people? Um, so I kind of got really interested into, in technology and how technology was built. So I actually went away from Sydney and I spent a couple of years at MIT. And it was around about the time that um, we started the Internet of Things. It was around about the time that we started gathering data sets to try and understand what was happening in cities. So I was working at a lab, Sensible City Lab, and we were one of the first labs to um, overlay data. This is actually telecommunication data. It's how people are using their phones onto a map of the city to try and read where the pulse of the city was and what's happening. This is during the World Cup final. It was actually back in 2006. Um, and you can see as, oh, this, and this has changed the Madonna concert. You can see that as various things happen in the Madonna concert, people are reacting in real time. And it's something that uh, you know, I became fascinated about, data, cities, technology, and all of that combining. And around the same time, a uh, design was a, uh, designed this electric bike called the Copenhagen Wheel. Um, it plugs and plays into any standard bike, and that's currently on sale at superpedestrian.com. Um, I was lucky enough that it was a Time Magazine top invention of 2014 as well. It also was the time that the iPhone came out. And you know, that got me into interface design. So I kind of went from big buildings to physical things uh, and then into, into apps and websites. And so you controlled the bike through your phone and started designing for that. When I left MIT, I started working with government um, and also kind of communities around how we can build apps and websites and services that harness public data for good. And so we did a bunch of hackathons across the world, um, you know, civic hackathons in San Francisco and in, uh, in, San in Singapore and London and trying to get people together. I realized after a couple of years that it doesn't pay very well, it's very noble, <laughs> um, but I actually kind of needed some money to survive and so I then went into building apps and websites for some large brands, Volkswagen and Target, and then went on to lead the design teams of um, a couple of startups, Dog VK and Veritas Prep. So that's kind of the brief history of where I've been. But uh, last year, only one thing to tell you, uh, Lena, co-founder of Curio, she came to me and she said, I have this really interesting idea. I believe that people want to shop at small local stores. They're unique, they're run by creative business owners, but right now it's super hard to do so. You don't want to shop at chain stores, you don't want to shop at Amazon, but it's really hard to access all of these small local stores. And the idea that she had was that what if we could get all of these stores onto one platform um, and then we can make it really easy to discover things in your city, but also really easy to purchase. Uh, so that's a startup that I'm currently working on, it's Curio, um, and downloadable in the App Store. I'm sorry for any Android users, it's not yet out on Android. We launched a couple of months ago, and you know, we're really all about helping you find and discover small local stores. 
So with that, I want to kind of talk about a little bit about community and what we've been thinking. So really, what I want to talk about is a fundamental shift in how we think about community. And what I'm excited about with all of you here is that each and every one of you has the power to make this transformation happen. I honestly believe that each and every one of you has the power to change the world. And I'm not just saying that, it's not just a cliche. Um, I think, I truly think it's possible. But to change the world, we really need to know the world. And we need to start by you know, understanding the world around us. So let's take a look at what the world is today. So we are undoubtedly more connected than ever before. 95% of Americans own a cell phone. 77% of those are a smartphone. And we have the world at our fingertips. We're making connections left and right. We're following people on Instagram. We're connecting with people on LinkedIn. We're uploading people on Reddit. We're you know, forging relationships over email, over Twitter, over today's Slack, a lot of the time as well, on blogs and forums. And we're more connected than ever before. So all these connections, that means we must be feeling amazing, right? We must be feeling more engaged, we must be feeling more looked after, and more surrounded by people that love us and trust us. That's the hope. But it turns out that it's just not true. We're feeling more left out and more lonely than ever before. So this is a study by uh, a sociologist, Jean Twin. She uh, studied generational shifts over 25 years, in particular looking at teenagers in this study. And she found that the percentage of teenagers that often feel left out is on a sharp rise. She also found that teenagers who feel lonely is also on a sharp rise. How many of you experienced FOMO before? Yeah, most of us, right? Um, but the interesting thing here for me is this dip around about 2007 and then the sharp incline after that. Does anyone know what happened in 2007? The iPhone came out. Um, and not to confuse causation with correlation, but you know, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting indicator. And the iPhone became popularized by about 2010. It started kind of being in everybody's pockets. Not only that, we're actually hanging out with friends a lot less as well. So again, this is teenagers. We see 12th graders, it starts to drop off. 10th graders, even more steep decline. And 8th graders, it's a pretty similar pattern to 10th graders. So this is the number of times per week that they're hanging out with friends without adult supervision. And again, the iPhone was released in 2007. But it's not just teenagers. How many of you are freelancers in the room? Or have your own business? Or work for yourselves? Okay, pretty much, you know, over 50%. Freelancing is on the rise. Freelancers comprise of 36% of the American workforce today. It's likely to be 50% uh, by the time we get to 2027. What does this mean? I mean, it means we'll all be working on the beach, like this. Right? Which is great. Uh, it also means that Apple needs to uh, design, design a screen that we can actually see in the sunlight. Which they know that's, that's but it also means that we're spending more time alone. More of our days are by ourselves. Even if we're in a coffee shop, even if we're in a co-working space, how many of you are just sitting there with your headphones in and your eyes to the screen? Or maybe you work with only one other person and that's the only interaction that you get. Gone are the days where we have water cooler talk, um, or we have consistent running into people and forming those social connections. It's not just freelancers, it's also old age. Uh, let's study the Drexel University uh, School of Public Health found that when we have less connections, when there's less trust in our community, when we have less, um, a lower degree of social capital, that your physical mobility goes down, your cognitive abilities go down, and your overall health decreases. So this is kind of a scary picture, and if I was you, I'd be thinking, stop it. You know, I came here for the coffee and the donuts, and I came here for the uplifting talk, and I don't want you to address me this morning. Um, but it's a reality that we face, and it's something we need to do something about. And so that's what we've been thinking about with our business is how do we build community and how do we not just have it as an Instagram post, but how do we truly build meaningful connections? And so back to this idea that you have the power, we have the power, it's not even about you, it's we. We have the power in this room to eradicate loneliness. 
We have the power to eradicate social anxiety, and we have the power to foster connection and trust and meaningful communities that actually care for each other. But we need a roadmap, right? It's not that easy to just be like, okay, cool, I'm gonna build a community. I know it's hard, when I came to LA, I didn't know anyone. And I, you know, I started building a community, and it takes time, and it takes you know, a lot of effort, but it can be done. So there's three things that I wanna to, want to talk about today. Um, the first is finding our people. When I was at MIT, you know, I was interested in studying technology and its relation on our social, social relationships. And the key thing for the start of any community is a shared belief, um, a common goal. And it used to be that you were born into this belief. It was easy, you know, in, in primitive societies, the common goal that you had was quite literally surviving. And so you all banded together to make this happen. Um, but you know, fast forward to the digital era, and suddenly we're not born into these communities anymore. Um, less of us are born into, for instance, a faith or a religion, which might have given us our sense of community before. Um, less of us are connecting with our, with our neighbors, with people around us. And if we're all working alone, then you know, we don't have it handed to us. And so there was actually an interesting quote from, um, from the researcher Bill Bishop, where he said, it used to be that people were born as part of a community, and they had to find their place as individuals. Now, people are born as individuals, and they have to find their community. And that's our job today. Our job is to find our community. But we're not used to it. You know, we're not used to finding community. <laughs> uh, we're used to it being handed to us. And so it's kind of a new way of thinking, where we have to kind of sort out, OK, how are we going to do this? And we're connecting with people, these quasi-communities. You know, we're connecting with a bunch of people online. It feels like we're entering a community, but we're not actually really entering a community. So what should we do? I actually want you all, those who have uh, a piece of paper out, that's fine, but everybody else, get your phones out. It's an unusual talk. I'm asking you to you know, talk about my community. I'm asking you to get your phone out. And open it up to um, a notes page so you can, you can take some notes. So if the foundation of community is a shared belief or a common goal, I want you to take one minute and write down what you believe in. What's the change that you want to see in the world? What makes you get up every day, every morning? And I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do that, and I'll give you an example. So, you know, Lena and I spent a lot of time thinking about what we believed in for Curio, and we believe that convenience shouldn't just be buying from Amazon, and that supporting local businesses is a better way to shop. So with that, I'm just going to give you a tiny bit of time to write down what you believe in the world. Probably about 90% of you were active participants. 
and 9%, you know, were kind of talking a little bit with each other, and then about 1%, you were sitting by yourself. But, um, but in a real community, or a true community, our social ties are created by interacting and by participating. And it's very different on the internet, but we can flip that. So what happens when we know that in a true community, 90% of people are active participants? Well, it means that we can actually spot fake communities, and there are many of them. So I'm going to play a little game. Uh, I'm going to do a hands up of who thinks these communities are fake community or a real community. Community one, cosplay. Uh, does anyone know what cosplay is? It's basically where adults uh, dress in, in costumes from either uh, television shows or cartoons. It's, it's kind of a, it's a creative outlet for many people. Um, so the cosplay community is where they get together and they, you know, they chat about the things that they're doing online. So who thinks that cosplay is a real community and who thinks cosplay is a fake community? Okay, all right. Uh, that was about 30% of you, maybe. Kendall Jenner's community. All right, she has 94.4 million followers. That's pretty impressive, impressive right? Um, and, you know, thousands of likes when she drops a product, everybody listens. Who thinks Kendall Jenner's community is a real community? Oh god, nobody. All right. <laughs> you know the answer. Um, my personal favorite when I was being invited to community when I was preparing for this talk is my lettuce. My lettuce was inviting me to join its Facebook community, which is pretty amazing. Even more amazing was that the lettuce has 287,000 members of its community and 306,000 people liking its community. That's pretty incredible. How many people think that the lettuce community is a real community? <laughs> a couple of people. We got a couple of people. I mean, you must. My husband is favorite food is lettuce, so he actually would agree. But, you know, for many of us, I don't know that the lettuce community is a real community. Um, well, there's some simple ways to tell, and I think sometimes you know, we're joining all these communities, but we're not actually participating. Kendall Jenner's community. If you look at all the comments, nobody's participating. Nobody's actually interacting with each other. And there's a word here that tells us that. The word followers. When we follow something, we're not a participant. In contrast with the cosplay community, they're members. Members of the community help each other out. It's, it's a lateral thing. It's not just you know, listening to the person at the top and following one person. So in that case, it becomes very easy to see that you know, we have fake communities, things that feel like we're connecting, but we're not really connecting. And then we have real communities, things like cosplay. And the other reason why I chose cosplay is because you know, this community has a history of getting together to protect its own. There's a lot of trust and protection in this community. So cosplay is not consent. Um, you know, the community realized that you know, this was an issue and they started to talk about it and they started to make changes within their own, own community. So that's participation. What's the third thing we have in our roadmap? And it's the third and final thing. The third thing we have to do is we have to grow our community. Our communities can't be stagnant. We need diverse ideas. We need to invite different people in. We'll never eradicate loneliness or FOMO if, if it's just ourselves. I think that 10 people can make a change. Uh, I think 10 people can make a difference, but I really think it's 100 people can make a change. The good news is, is that you've all started. You've all started to create your community. And I think it's enough of hearing about me today. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of up here. I don't want you to follow, <laughs> be a follower. I want you to be a participant. So now is the time for action. I'd like everybody to stand up. Okay. I'd like, uh, could I have a show of hands volunteers who would like to read their belief statement? Great, over here first. Let me give you the mic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whoever wants to volunteer can read their belief statement. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to break into small groups around us and read our belief statements to each other if you don't feel like reading it to the entire group. And the purpose of this is that you need to connect with other people. You're already connected to some people in this room, but we're going to connect you to others who have a shared common belief. If you hear something in this room that you align with, 
And that's your task for, you know, once we finish this talk, your task is to connect with those people and talk with them. So, thank you. I believe art has the power to change people's lives. Great. Who's next? No other volunteers? Okay, we've got some in the back. Who put their hand up? Yep. This is Logo from my company Town, but we believe that talent and opportunity should not be restricted by cost, geography, diversity, or nepotism. Fantastic, guys. I believe people are good and want to have a connection. I believe that levity saves lives. We can make connections, break tension, and better understand ourselves, each other, and the world through humor. Yeah, any, any comedians? Come see this guy. Right. Uh, I believe that poetry and fine art should be as celebrated as sports and film in Hollywood. Great. Anybody else? Okay, we've got one over here. I believe that the more stories we learn about others, uh, the more we learn about ourselves. Fantastic. Okay, so that's it for me, guys. I'm uh, I'm done for the morning, but it's not it for for you. And I hope that you meet people today that you haven't met before. I hope that you read each other's name tags and ask them what they mean by that. And yeah, I, I hope that I can join more of your communities as well. So thank you, guys. <laughs>